Imagine the compressing the 10,000 word of text into a single image and still being able to read it back with the 97% accuracy. That's exactly what DeepSeek OCR does. In this video, we will break down how this new AI model uses here the optical compressions to revolutionize how machine can handle the long context. Yesterday, DeepSeek AI Lab published here a paper called DeepSeek OCR Context Optical Compressions. They present here DeepSeek OCR as an initial investigation into the feasibility of compressing the long context by the optical 2D mapping. So this is the official hugging face repository of the DeepSeek AI. You can see on here. You can easily access the GitHub. You can also download the model. You can also see the paper link. So you can see that how can you basically use it. So if I see the GitHub repo, you can see the this the official GitHub repo for the DeepSeek AI. You can easily read this out and I attach this link in the descriptions. Now let's try to see that how uh, the DeepSeek OCR basically work. I mean with, with the full of demo. This is a paper. You can see DeepSeek OCR context optical compression. You can also read the paper. Okay. So we'll back to this paper in this video as well. So let's see the uh, the demo, the full demo of DeepSeek OCR. You can see how to use upload an image using the upload box. And you can see select a resolutions. So it is support here some several types of resolutions. We'll discuss this later on. So let's try to click here and drop an image and try to upload it. So I'm going to upload here uh, this image. I just uh, cropping this out from the paper. So you can also upload here the image who would have the images itself, the image of the person. So if I go down, you can see that uh, which kind of resolution is basically supported. You can see uh, Gundam is basically recommended. Uh, converted to the markdown, you can see the Gundam recommended. We have the figures and the images that is basically using the base model. And a small model, it also locate here the object by the reference and the base model for the free OCR. Now it is uploaded the uh, images correctly. Now, when I click here to process image, it will process the image. You can also selecting here some resolution size from it. I just uh, click here this Gundam and then I can click here the process image. So it will basically processing here the image. If it have the text result, it will try to uh, uh, extract the information from it. And then if it does have any kind of images, let's say person images, it can easily locate these things just like the object detection model, right? You can see on here, you can see that it basically locating the object by the reference. Okay. So to wait for a few seconds because it will uh, loading and also initializing the GPU. Okay. So let's wait for a few seconds. Okay. So you can see here the text result. It will basically starting the information from this uh, the images. And also you can see that at table uh, because it have a table. And also you can see that it will basically detecting here. You can see detecting here at the case of boxes. I mean, it can basically locating here as a vision things. I mean, it it can using here this uh, full text into an token. Okay, vision tokens. We'll discuss it. We'll break it down more. Now let's go on our whiteboard again. Okay, now let's uh, go down. So what problem does it solve? So you know that LLM like GPT, it is struggling with a long text sequency. Important word. So you can take one markdown. We can take in the yellow color, that's the problem. Okay, so long text sequence because the competitions grow quadratically with a context lens. So what is basically context lens? Context lens is you can take it as a sentence lens. I mean, how many contexts you're going to take in that for creating here and vectors. Okay, in the case of large language models. So how in the context lens is basically increases, it means that competition is also increases. Yes, increases in the case of large language model. Okay, so first things, Second, let's take one example. Let's say I'm going to processing here and 10,000 token. So 10,000 token of the text. So it's obviously required here the huge memory and the cost. We know that, that how you basically training the large language model. Now, what is the idea behind that? So idea is basically converting the text into an image, converting the text into an image and let an OCR based vision model to compress it. It's been that we have a text, if I see the example, I mean the uh, test we do, we can see that it is basically detecting this thing. So what it will do, it will just converting the text into an image, detecting things 
and let an OCR based vision model to compress it. That's the idea. That's the main idea. This create here a visual memory. One image can represent a thousand of token. One image can represent a thousand of token. It can easily you can do it because you are using the OCR based vision model. That's the problem is solved by the deep seek OCR. Okay. Now the core idea behind the scene of the context optical compression. If I see that the, uh, the, the paper is context optical compression. Now what is that actually? So deep seek is basically treating the text like a photo. Deep seek is right now treating the text like a photo. Instead of feeding the text token, it is basically using here a Bichon token. It using here a Bichon token. Images patches. Now what are the images patches? What is the images patches? If I go on the paper, if I go on the paper, you can see that uh, in the architecture, you can see patch, some patch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, like kind of patches. I mean, into dividing the images into some kind of patches. Let's say I have images. Let's say I have images like that. So it will just divide them like that. So it should be the one, two, three, four, like four chunks. That is also we done it in BIT, Vision Transformer Model. In our Vision Transformer Model, we also do that. We convert them, the images into some kind of patches and you can pass it to the linear model and it is done by the, the Vision Model itself for the image classifications, okay? Now, since one image can store a lot of a text visually, this gives us a 10x to 20x compression. Let's try to remove this out, then we discuss about that. Since one image can store a lot of text visually, we know that. So it gives a 10x to 20x compression because we know that we can easily compress the images. That's our main idea. So this approach is allow the smaller model to handling the longer conversation or document. If you have the longer conversations, usually you do it with your girlfriends, a longer, longer conversations, a jokes apart actually. So you can easily basically handle these things, okay? Okay, thoda to maja aana chahiye na, padai mein. Okay, that's done. Now, let's see the deep thick OCR architecture overview. So if I see in the paper, I just take the images from the paper in the figure number three. So deep thick OCR has just has the two main component. One is the encoder, another one is the decoder. We know that same case in the transformer. So in here it's called the deep encoder, which is basically to compress the image efficiently. Another one is basically deep thick 3B MOE. MOE. Or A570M decoder model. Which one is reconstructs the text from the compressed visual uh, features? If I see that we have an input, it converts them into some kind of patches, and then it is basically passing through this deep encoder. And then deep encoder output is going to pass into the decoder as well as the prompt. As well as the prompt. And this is a decoder, and finally we got here our output that is taken from the paper because we bragged on the paper. Okay. So uh, this is the main component. Now let's see the deep encoder. If I see the deep encoder, it consists in three things. SAM, it's a conversion layer. Another one is a clip. So you can say it's basically built for SAM. SAM for segment anything model for the visual perceptions. In the window attention, you can see on here, percent for dominated by the window attentions. And a clip, you know that what is basically a clip? If you know about the vision transfer model, you know that what exactly it was actually, okay? So uh, clear for the global attentions and the visual uh, knowledge. So <clears throat> as well as you, if you have the knowledge about the auto encoder, you also know that what is, what was that actually the clip. So between them, uh, 16x convolution layer, convolution, convolution compressor, reduce the number of vision token drastically. It will drastically reduce them. Example, let's say we have a one cross two four cross one zero two four cross image, it's a grayscale image, let's say. So it will have the 4096 patches, patches of the images. If I see these images correctly, so this is our input, it will create them some kind of patches. And then it will compress to the 256 Bichon token, 256 Bichon token, which is nothing but our teacher model. I mean, our base things, our base resolution size. So this keeps the memory low while returning the information to the quality. It's nothing but an insight. That's it. Now, what is the multi-resolution support? What is the multi-resolution support actually? So DeepSeq OCR support here multiple image model like tiny or tiny, whatever you can spelling. 
uh, uh, the small, the base, large, and the gone down that you can also see the resolution size. So each model corresponds to different input resolutions and the number of Bichon token. You can see for the tin it takes 64 token, for a small it 100, for base it will take in here 256 that you can see on here. And in the case of large, is a 400 and for the godam is up to 800 plus it's token it's to convert them okay so if i see that uh, in the figure number say four you can see that uh the weight and the height the model teeny is six four a small 400 and base model is 256 and large is 400 and same thing on here okay so just taking this screenshot i mean snapshot from the paper you can just easily um, read it from the paper now what is the moe decoder i mean the brain <laughs> So decoder using here mixer of expert M O E M O E. If you don't know what is that, don't worry, just comment below so that I can also create a video about that. You can also go search on Google. So only have six of 64 expert are active during the interface. That's an expert are basically uh, uh, are active during the interface inference time. Okay, not interface inference times. So total five seven zero million active parameter efficient like a small model. Uh, expressive like a 3 billion models okay i mean if the model has the 3 billion parameter so in here it has this uh, five seven three million active parameters because it's basically drastically changing the uh, the size of the uh, tokens so it's mapped the compression mission tokens back into the text the ocr is basically processed so we can basically process the text into images and we can back it from the image to text image to text that is done by the moe decoder now let's see the training data engines. So it has the four main category, OCR 1.0 uh, data, OCR 2.0 data, another one is the general vision data, another one is the text only data. So let's see the OCR 1 data. It the standard document and seen OCR, it had the 13 million pages over the 100 plus languages. It contains the data. OCR 2.0, structured data like chart, the chemical formula, the most important one, the geometry also. Now, the general vision data, like for the image understanding, I mean the object detection that you can run it by Yulu model. Text only data maintain the language uh, fluency trained on 20 GPU nodes. See the most important one A10440G, 30 million pages per day data for the data generations that you can see. 20 GPU that actually actually use that. Okay. So maybe my language is also be there. My own language is Bangla. So I am feeling from that I am a Bengali. <laughs> okay, result. So how good it is? So compression study for the Fox benchmarks. So 97% OCR are precisions at the 10x compressions and 60% accuracy even at the 20x compressions. So you can also using here an OCR called the paddle OCR. I just recommend you to also testing this out. It also good or it, uh, because you know that just deep sea OCR is just coming up. They may be changing some of the parameters or changing some of the structure things. But parallel is here is still good. You can also testing this out. So Omni doc bands, you can see in the uh, the first things paper. So outperform of GOT OCR 2.0 to 56 token pages. I mean for the base model with only 100 Bichon tokens. Now it is beating here the Minari U2. There are seven, see 7,000 plus token plus pages using here less than 800 Bichon tokens in the Godams. So bottom like deep sea OCR as if the state of art result with a far fewer tokens. Token size is also included. It means that the memory size is also increases. The cost is also minimized. Now let's see the capabilities beyond the OCR. So deep parsing is actually extracting the structured data from the chart. It can geometry and the chemical formula. It can easily parse in the data from it. Also, it will supporting the multi-language, I mean multilingual OCR, support here up to 100 plus languages. Now, general vision understanding, it can describe the images, it can detect the object like the uh, YOLO or the TensorFlow object detections and also perform the groundings. This make it both a compressing engines and universal visual language inferences. How it has the three things, it can parsing the data, it can uh, detecting, it can support the languages, it also detecting the objects objects also from the images quite thing i mean everything in one all in one right like that now discussion why it is a big deal let's say we are just mimicking the human memory recently recent information is still clear i mean let's say high end the taxes actually or high in the, high in the any kind of problems are 
anything is happening in your life, it will be crystal clear. But all memories is faded. All memories faded when you are just a child or when you are just kids. Your well memory is like, like a blurry things. So future alarms could forget older context naturally by progressively shrinking the image resolution. So when basically shrinking the image resolution, it can progressively actually forget the things. I mean the future, uh, the last notch models. So this could make infinite context alarms possible, combining the memory efficiency and the biological realisms. That just combining with the biological realisms that human can do that. So if I see one image from the figure number 30, so let's see this is the memory. So how it just happened, it's a crystal clear. Let's say right now I am recording the videos, it's crystal clear right now. So after one hour, so it will be very clear. Okay, after one day it may be clear. And after one week, it looked like the blurry things that is actually happening in the old movies and very blurry after one month and almost gone for the one year, it will almost blurry, blurry, blurry. Okay. Same thing for the vision. You can see how I see this uh, microphone. It's crystal clear. And when I just go back, uh, it's quite uh, clear. Okay. But how it go almost gone, let's say 20 centimeter or 30 centimeter, I cannot see it easily. Same thing for the textual data. They try to combine the real things up to the, uh, the AI models, okay? Now the conclusions. So deep seek OCR, it's, uh, it's just an OCR model with the new uh, paradigm for the AI memory, but are turning word into the images and uh, compressing the context optically. So deep seek AI has opened a new frontier for efficient multi-modal intelligence. So uh, that's it actually from my site. I hope you enjoy this full tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels uh, because uh, our subscriber is still stuck on 37k. So uh, I need your support as well. Also, one more thing you can also uh, follow my uh, playlist. It's called Multiverse of 100 Plus uh, Data Science Project Series. Already uploaded here 84 plus projects. So if you want to learn here the machine learning, the deep learning or GNI projects, you can easily follow my YouTube playlist. So I'll add this to the description as well. Okay. So that's it from my site. I hope you easily understood these things. Okay. So next time I'll come again with some another hot topics. Thank you and bye-bye. Namaste.